sorry. Gotta catch my breath a little bit. Um, playing tag with my girls. They're four and a half and they have all this energy. And well, I'm not as young as I used to be. And I don't quite have the same energy as they do. Whew. I love, love playing tag with them. And I love playing tag in general. I've always been a big fan of tag, but it can wear a person out for sure. So I apologize for the heavy breath. <laughs> Whew. Anyway, I don't know if you like tag. Do you like tag? I like tag because you don't need a lot of people if you don't but you could also have a ton of people and it's still a great game. I think you can even have just two people and just chase each other and I still think it's a pretty good tag game if you like the people you're chasing around with, of course. But I know that tag is great also because there are many different variations. I mean, I can think of so many right now that I've played over the years, you know. I've had a few years to play tag, but there are some pretty cool ones out there. There's freeze tag, and I think there's like sharks and minnows, and band-aid tag, and like a prisoner tag, and oh, amoeba tag. That's like one of my favorites because once you're tagged, you become it with the person who's it. So then you start to have like this long line, and you're crazy, and I mean, tag is great. There are so many different kinds. Um, in fact, in the description, if you want to check it out, we have a link to 10 different types of tags. You know, check it out. Tell us in the comments whether you played those before, you, one looks fun to play, you want to play one of those. Let us know. Or maybe there's a tag that you know that you think is like, this is the greatest tag out there. You have to play this game. Let us know. And hopefully when things kind of blow over, we can get back together. We can play that tag game because tag is fun even if it is exhausting. There's also a type of tag that I really like that has like a safe place. Uh, sometimes it's called a home place, but it's like a safe place. And I know that when I used to play those, we've had, we used everything. You could have had a safe chair that all you have to do is touch a chair, or you could have had a safe table that all you had to do is touch a safe table. One of my favorites, which was kind of funny, was there was a safe pillow. And at first it was just a pillow near like a couch that you would just touch but it became where the one of the people picked it up and was running around with it being just safe all the time and running around with it and everybody was like ah oh, share it was really funny but also maybe not the point of the game but safe places are kind of cool i kind of like that kind of tag but i'm sure you're like heather what are you talking about why are you talking about tag? Well, we have been reading Psalms, if you don't know already, and today we're gonna read out of Psalm 7 and we're gonna see why I'm talking about tag or how that has anything to do with anything. So let's go ahead and start. Psalm 7, we're gonna start with verse one, okay? Verse one says, Lord my God, I go to you for safety. Help me, save me from all those who are chasing me. Two weeks ago, I believe, Sonia was talking about David. See, David is the writer of a lot of the Psalms, and David had a lot of enemies. I mean, a lot of enemies because of his life, you know, as a follower of God and just his life in general, he was in, he was in power that he had a lot of enemies. And the thing is, is when you have a lot of enemies, you feel a pretty unsafe and you feel like you need a place to be safe. And he knew that God was his place of safety. God was a safe place for him. So when we think about the safe place and tag, you know that that's the place where you won't get tagged, where you can take a breath, where you can rest because, oh my goodness, that's exhausting. And I wish there was a safe place in my game but I'm usually the one it when I play with my girls anyways. <laughs> but it's a safe place that you can rest and you can, you know, like, you know, touch the chair and be like, okay, you can't touch me, I'm touching the chair. Or you, you, you were close to getting hit, but you grabbed it in time or whatever it is, it's your safe place. And David was saying in that is that God was his safe place and that God helps him. And the thing is, God did help him. But David didn't stop there. He didn't just say, God is a safe place and he helps me. But he also was like, you know what? I need to be doing what God wants me to do. 
He wanted to not do bad things. He believed that people should do good things. He even said in the Psalm that if he's doing bad things to his friends, then the enemy should take him. Now, God is going to protect us. He's wonderful and he's um, just awesome. But it's good what David is saying about what we should be doing because sometimes we do, a lot of times when we do wrong to others, it will catch back up to us. And this is what it's in verses, we're going to go to verses 14 through 16 and it says, Whoever is full of evil plans, trouble, and ends up telling lies. Whoever digs a hole and shovels it out falls into the pit they have made. The trouble they cause comes back on them. The terrible things they do will happen to them. You know, this idea of someone shoveling a hole, doing all that work, sweating, especially today, it is a hot day. They're shoveling away and then they fall into their pit. That's not great. But it's talking about the fact that when we make trouble and we do things, sometimes that comes back on us. And really, it only comes back on us because we are doing the trouble. If we did what God wants us to do, what we're supposed to do, David is saying that we will be blessed beyond that too. You know, we, we, when we do good things, it tends to work out better for us. You know, um, you, you go and hit your sister or your brother. Usually what happens is it doesn't go well for you. You may have had that moment where, yes, I got that, my sibling for hitting me because he did whatever or she did whatever. But eventually the trouble comes and it's not so great when maybe the better thing to do would be to figure out why your sibling is frustrating you and maybe try to work through it or even you know bring in a parent and say mom dad she's driving me crazy or she's driving me crazy especially now when we're all stuck inside i know that can be trouble troubling but David is saying that instead of making trouble, we want to be more and more like God. Now, we learn from the Bible that God is love. God is fair. He's just. He's kind. And that's what David is saying we should be like. That's what we should be like. The Bible says that we should be like God and we should be like Jesus. And he wasn't a troublemaker in the sense that we know what troublemaking is. He was a good person and he loved people so much that he died on a cross for us. So when we got to think about that, we don't want to dig our own holes and fall into them. We want to do what God calls us to do. Well, David finishes the Psalm like this. I will give thanks to the Lord because he does what is right. I will sing the praises of the name of the Lord most high. God always does what's right. And because he does what's right, it is no wonder that we can put our hope and our rest and be safe with him because his promises are true, because he loves us so much. So remember that, that you can find safety in God, rest in God, and you can be like him so you can do great things. So we're not shoveling our own holes to fall into because... I mean, I'm, I used to be big into mud and playing around. That's just something fun about that as a kid. I used, you know, I don't know all the things you do with mud and stuff, but I don't think I want to fall into a hole. I don't, it's not for me. Anyways, point is God is good and he is a place, you know, a safe place and we can put our trust and our hope and our love in him. And that's what David is really saying. And that we can, we should praise his name that he does those things. Let us pray. Lord, thank you so much for who you are. And thank you for this time that we can sort of get together. And maybe it's not the way we would truly imagine it, but I know, Lord, that you are with everyone who is watching this video and everyone who is dealing with what they're dealing with, Lord. Please bless them and remind them of who you are and how you are, Lord, a very safe, restful place, Lord, that you have so much for us, Lord, that we can't even imagine and that it's better than causing trouble or doing that. Praise you, Lord, for all you are. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, see you later and uh, hope that you have a really great week and um, 